finally found a solution for them for two years to try and tackle this in a, in a way to, to change the behaviour so that maybe one day we can go to a 12 week defence. Um, what we found when we first went to a 12 week defence, although there was an increase in, in complaints from, from a number of individuals, the actual tonnages that we were clearing out of the annual values were actually less. So it was reaching that tipping point where people just didn't put any more out because either they couldn't fit it out there or it, you know, they just, you know, it got to a point where they didn't want to make it any worse. Um, so we've got to learn our lessons from that one. But at the same time, if we, we're in the throes now of a, um, an enhanced enforcement regime in those alleyways and backed up with um, a lot more um, communications with the with residents living in those 20,000 or so properties, um, and we are having quite a positive impact. Um, Biffle have got a, a waste investigation unit, um, there's two man crew that work basically tirelessly to uh, you know, uncover evidence, uh, they're knocking on doors, they don't just refer it to the above, they can deal with it there and then by talking to builders, talking to landlords, talking to the rest of the they will do. That's having a big impact. And I think, Biffle, would you say, Gary, you see how reduced? Amount of the big flight we used to get. Yeah, we are, um, particularly in Anthony's. Um, they have caused me to feel our successful bill, what they expected, uh, sent me the first 12 months in a few quite a number of prosecutions um, in support of the UK. Uh, so it's been a really, uh, really good initiative, a joint initiative, what's been very beneficial and we've seen some reduction in energy waste to feed So it's, keep, it's keeping up that momentum that we need to do now. We need to you know, just come to the end of year one. Going into year two, and it's making sure now that we're making the most of the contributions that we get so people do understand that there is penalties to be had if they don't uh, concern the behaviour. Um, <coughs> Lethal removal programme was one of the concerns that we did have when we went to the uh, new free frequencies, and well, we've actually over the past two years successfully delivered that programme within our budgets. Um, and we have, have helped from Parks and Countryside as well, and we've um, helped us um, basically bulk up the leaf into satellite areas, which has saved a lot of time and back and forth with lots of leaves. So that's worked really, really well. <laughs> litter bin provision was key. Um, we've uh, doubled the size of the number of litter bins in, especially secondary retail areas, because we have now a neighbourhood team in each constituency <coughs> that runs around and empties <coughs> those litter bins. And um, they've been really, if you can see the chart on page 17, you know, when we first went to the new regime, they obviously didn't know their areas were new to it, and it took them a little while to get used to where and why these things are empty. They've also been preferring areas to us so we can put extra stuff uh, out there as well. So that's worked really well. That's one of my major concerns that we have, because we weren't visiting these streets as often. Would we well sent to the bins? And actually, yes, we have been able to. Um, flight and your responses. Um, it was a bit, the neighbourhood teams again had that flexibility to respond to those, but they were longer paying uh, before, well, we're not happy about it, but we're <laughs> longer paying the response that we get through if it's up to a certain time of day, if we do that as part of their general work now. So that's actually in addition to the thing that I said, a little bit on the rapid response budget that we were, we were um, um, using. Um, we are designing at the moment a little prevention strategy, which is an overarching strategy that uh, brings together behavioural change, um, operational issues, and enforcement, education, all of those things, to try and optimise how they actually reduce the amount of litter getting on our streets in the first place. It's not just people dropping litter, it's, it's waste escaping through poor waste management, and uh, that's quite significant uh, as well. You, know, you go along the A41, People haven't thrown that litter out of the waste, it's, it, it's blown, blown up the back of trucks, that kind of thing. So there's a, there's a wide range of things we do need to tackle, but the other is to be able to make further efficiencies in the area uh, going forward. Um, one of the things that um, I've asked you to endorse today, and we go to the recommendations on page 22, um, is the fact that we're going to have this annual litter reduction program every year. And we don't know what match, what we'll look like from one year to the next. It depends on the priorities and it depends on the priorities of constituencies as well. Um, so we've asked that maybe that could be something that could be brought to the committee and endorsed on a, on a, on a regular basis. Uh, or included in our um, basically the our waste and management services business plan as part of our direct trip plan. So it's something that you would be monitoring anyway um, in the policy performance. Uh, work that you can do as a committee. Um, also, there is a group 
£24,000 left in the £1 million funding pot, transitional funds, uh, that we have not yet committed. And in the report um, are a number of um, ways in which we feel as officers is the most sensible way to put that money to best use to sort of mitigate the continuing risks that we have um, of making sure that we can cleanse the statutory standards and you know, continue to make improvements in this area. Um, so uh, hopefully if that's got endorsement from the committee today, um, I can go ahead and work more specific plans for um, portfolio holder to, <coughs> to approve for us to, to get cracking on that. One of the main um, areas of spend for that is um, we will be a part of the budget option saving for 2015-16. We will be looking at um, commissioning out litter patrols and that will see a, a massive increase in the number of people that potentially could be uh, being issued with a litter fine um, with, you know, based on what other districts have in their area of areas related. We should talk in 4,000, 4, litter fines even the first year, it's, that's, that's massive compared to what we're used to. And we are aware that there are a lot of people in the borough that would struggle to pay that fine. We have an issue at the moment with them not paying them in their drinking area. So one of the things I'd like to do is to um, is to offer some form of other way of, of them basically uh, discharging that that penalty. Uh, and actually going in the worst course uh, for a couple of hours. They still have to pay for it, but it wouldn't be as much as the actual fine itself, so it makes it more affordable for those people who do end up in that position. Um, and hopefully, you know, they'll learn something on the course. Um, it's not quite as hard hitting as a, a speed awareness course, because obviously the statistics they can throw at you, but that is, is much, much greater. So, it will be a two way process. We will be learning from the people going on that course <coughs> and understanding their values and why they've lived or why they've liked it waste. And from that, hopefully, we can design better and more targeted campaigns going forward. So the commission for that work will be for the design and delivery of the courses in the first year, for all of the research and the, the focus group work that will happen with the people that go on the courses, and then the design of the appropriate campaign that we can maybe uh, get into run the following year. Okay. 
Um, how do you think that is going to affect frontline services? Because that is a massive amount. That's nearly 40% of your workforce gone. How do you think that's going to affect frontline? Because I certainly do. And what areas do you think is going to affect frontline? Well, right, right now, it's um, the, the, the... Go towards you. The, the schedule's in place. Uh, we're still a little bit learning on how to do it, but we're gaining passion by experience. Um, I'll link up to you, for example, where um, these guys are pretty reactive. They think have some responsibilities, but each day they can be seconded by the council of the time and monitor to go and be hot for areas. But they're also learning where their pitch points are as well, so they're in their area, they don't know where to focus their efforts on, particularly first thing in the morning. So that sort of knowledge has become invaluable. And as Tara mentioned earlier on, the percentage of treatment in schools on the NR one of our <coughs> principles has remained constant. So we believe the service had well, it hardly will be affected because the schedule's different, we believe that they're adequate. Okay, we've got one last question, Chair. Um, when we talk about the penalty charges and you just say like that you're gonna send them on a course, why aren't we just sending them out and let's get Instead of, like, I'm not being funny, like, the community out there. I mean, they give it up. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> 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 I, I said it to the <coughs> family. <coughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know if people are going to get them on board, whether it's, you know, letting the dog do the do do on the pavements or wherever. I think really they should be doing, like, community hours the same, because at the end of the day, it's a criminal. Um, there, there are a wide range of potential punishments that you can, can offer. I think one of the things um, that's been researched quite heavily is, is, is that um, what, what is a suitable deterrent, shall we say, for, for them doing it in the first place. Uh, one of the things that it's been warned against is actually sending out people with speaking as a punishment. We have a very healthy, lovely rural programme where people go out and volunteer to do it. It, it can be a fun and engaging activity. If it's seen something punitive um, and only that, then it may be that some people will be less likely to be involved in it. I'm just going off what the research is, is saying, I'm not disagreeing with that, um, but certainly, <coughs> certainly in schools, we start all research we've done in schools on that, and it's, you get a lot more people engaging with the speaker picking on a more regular basis if they do it through voluntary through work rather than through a punishment. The other thing is, is you know, the street planting guys, especially now there are less of them, do an amazing job and work, some of them work extremely hard to keep their areas tidy uh, and to offer um, risk taking as a punishment can actually um, make, you know, it can have an impact on how they feel when they do their job and, and how they're treated on the ground by other people and if we're going to make sure that they get the respect they deserve on the ground then we have to be careful. It's a fine balance really. The, the other, the other obviously issue about the, the litter picking is that it can be quite, it's very difficult to risk assess, it can be quite intensive to actually organise um, and you know, resource intensive, so whether we, we can afford it that way would be something we have to look at. Um, I'd just like to add an addendum to that, you always said there's a course awareness and it's, it's been a, a big success since it was introduced for speeding drivers. And if you, if you get a goal, how much will it cost the person to actually go on the course? Um, we can set the, the, the fee at uh, whatever we think is appropriate. That's enough to you know, engage and make sure people you know, do attend. Uh, but not too much that probably think, oh, I'll just pay the fine instead. So there's, there's, a, there's a happy medium there. The, the aim of it would be after year one to try and make the course self funding. Um, once the course material has been designed and everything else is in place, um, on, a, on a speed awareness course, you usually get around 20 to 25 people. Um, so you've got to make sure that whoever runs that course, their costs are covered, plus the room booking and everything else. It wouldn't be something you would make any money out of, you just want to cover your costs. And you can continue to offer that as an alternative going forward. Uh, I think a lot of the ways in which it could be set up would mirror the way the student awareness course is offered. I suspect somewhere around the 25 to 30 pound mark would be about right. But you know, that needs further work at this point in time. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. Um, <coughs>
for the Board to discuss. Yeah, just to answer the question of you, I've just actually sent an email off to David Ball, um, who identified the errors in the first place, to say, is there any new areas that you want to include and add in or change in, the, in, in that? So it is something that we review and it's in the course of the plans, and we want to do it in the same way, but we try and, because it's on the board, we're trying to push ourselves up a little bit more. So last year we added this graffiti to it, as well as the, the, the streets, cleansing uh, and the tritus. And this year, um, you know, we're we'll looking to, is there any other little areas where we can just expand that out to, to just uh, put these guys under a little bit more pressure to be honest? I don't know if I'm not going to do that easily. So, uh, as, as Gary said, we spent a lot of time in um, probably putting more resources into it than what we've actually paid for uh, in, in all that digging out and, and channels and, and edging work that um, often doesn't get done um, in, today's, in today's climate. No, that, that's brilliant. And I, I think in the same vein as, as what John asked for would be possible for that item to be resolved through David to get circulated to members just so we're aware of, of those areas. Um, the other point um, I'm just going to speed on is to do with um, the replacement of really great bins for terraced areas. Uh, I think this is a really, really good initiative because um, one of the massive problems I have with all the is, is bin theft and damaged bins and things like that. Um, and I'm just wondering what the take up has been like that on so far. The leaflets are just about to go out, so oh, we're well into it. We've got enough money to pay for it. Um, so we will we'll report back on that as soon as we know. Uh, there is a reserve fund that uh, Mark Golden at the back there has kindly uh, looked, at, looked after for me on here so that I can uh, use the money on this initiative. Um, and it is quite, it's, it's an interesting one because whilst it will probably be more. Um, uh, important in the terrace housing areas because bins are left out more often and there are collection points rather than just outside people's houses. There is bin theft is higher in those areas. I think there'll be potentially an issue, you know, in other parts of the borough as well. So this will be a really good indicator of, of um, you know where we're at and how many we've taken a lot of abandoned bins off the highway in the past two or three years. <coughs> and and um, if you look at the numbers coming through streets and requesting new bins, it's not as high as it used to be. So we do think there's quite a few people out there without a bin. And certainly from the other way dumping, we, we do give people an opportunity to contact us. So if, if, if they're found to have been flighted and the evidence is there, uh, we do write to them first and say, look, come and talk to us before we issue this, this, this gets penalty. And many of the people that do, actually that's one of the main reasons that they have been doing what they've been doing, because they haven't got a bin and they don't know how to go about getting one. Uh, it is an issue, I think, in particular in the transient areas where you've got the landlords, and perhaps the landlords, that kind of thing. And I'm hoping that uh, one of the focuses for this next uh, financial year is to work um, with our colleagues in housing around the uh, licensing scheme to see what things we can stipulate and put in that package of, of, of requests to actually um, help um, with that situation. Brilliant. And one, one final point on that um, It's come the group that we can you said there more. Um, just initially it was due to come to the 31st of March. Since the leaflets are going out later, will that be extended to give people a, a greater chance to sort of uh, get a bit of a new one? It's a reserve fund, so it can go over from one point to the next. So right. we will, I mean, we're hoping that because it's a first come first serve basis, we will get a quick response. Um, and what I've asked for as well is we can't leave for everybody at the same time. It's obviously impossible. So we, we're, we're looking at where we're leafleting and we're making sure we have the same opportunity to, to request the bin. Just if they receive a leaflet you know, five days later and the bins are run out, we're, we're avoiding that situation by making sure we, we, we look at I was hopeful all councillors will get involved with that initiative as well, as, as Pippa and, and ourselves. Um, thanks, Trina. Uh, thanks, Charlie. Trina. Well, thanks, Chair. Um, I just want to know whether the announcement really is about um, the street plans in on 2.2. Um, it's been significantly uh, reduced from uh, a monthly plans to now 12 weeks. Um, and so what is the, how is that going to reduce the fight of it? Because lots of people just want to leave the couches and things on their feet, from gardens. How is that 12 weekly cleanse going to impact on that? Uh, you talked about commissioning litter patrols. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you coming on the, what's happening?
We, we have seen a, a, a overall years of decrease in plants, I think, um, and we manage it uh, with the neighbourhood teams now, rather than as tall as we thought it should be a charge, so as we have the response, we can see um, so spend reduction in the lack of responses. Um, with the 12 week cleanse, yes, there will be, um, there will be flights, I think, um, there's a five day response on it. Um, the, the leaf is, is, is what we believe is one of our biggest 
big success, particularly during this, let's be fair, quite a dramatic change in Steve Burnley. I've got no objection to, to the points that you're making, what it's been saying. It was actually, uh, I mean, reported four times before a specific area was cleared in because of the report. Uh, I'm being very ward conscious now in this because it is my ward. It's a medieval village, eastern village, the layout. It's very heavily treed. It's a major problem in that we've got very narrow roads, pathways. So the pathways that we have got, further on than the was, the York Stones, and that's it. And uh, I, was, I was actually in the village with uh, Dave Reese and another engineer. We were talking about speed reductions, and we were standing halfway on the pavement because the leaves were halfway on the pavement and a third of the way into the road, and it was just a complete motion. We had to stop because the two sweepers came along one after the other. Uh, it, I know it's, it's, it's a problem that we're going to have to learn to, uh, um, to, to sort out. But there are certain areas, and it's in the report later on, where you would like to, some of the savings you can make to clean certain areas where uh, algae grows on heavily walked areas. It's something that baffled me if it's walked regularly, and I haven't got a chance to go to this place. But I understand certain areas where it's have been treated. So these things will happen and it's a good program that you're looking forward to. Um, I go back to the very first part I said at the beginning. Um, the people in terraced houses, and we're going to do a lot more education to actually get them to do what is required for themselves and do it in, in, in the right way. Um, it's a way of finding people to get people to come and do things. But when we started the whole process, we did have a group of employees that went out of it. We still have a slight reduction, there will be a slight reduction in terms of the 10% staffing uh, changes, but we will have four um, recycling officers who uh, are pretty much you know, doing the same role as what, what we were talking about earlier. Um, and they will be um, one of our, again, another of our business plan priorities this year is to actually look at capture it and recycle it across the borough. Um, whilst we have got some issues in terms of houses which manifest themselves on flight of being and things that we can see, uh, we're also aware of uh, generally it's getting harder and harder to capture all of the recyclers um, across the borough in the areas where we were dependent on a lot of broadleaf papers and heavy glass wine bottles. They're just not in the waste stream anymore. Um, and what that's doing is it's tipping our our percentage of what we recover, so we need to work harder to get that stuff, you know, the remainder of that stuff out of the uh, out of the waste stream. The disposal authority are funding a, a seasonal waste composition analysis this year. We had done every, I think last time we did it was 2010, um, and that will give um, every district in in Merseyside uh, up to date information about what we should, what we can be getting, what our capture rates could be out of these waste streams for the different demographics, demographics across the borough. Um, so whilst we have got concerted effort into the terrace housing areas for you know the little bit of radical quality issues. Um, there is still quite a lot of recycling we should be getting from the suburbs as well that we're not getting. Um, and um, one of the business plan objectives this year is to to uh, analyse the every single round well, you know, who's performing better than the other rounds and, and targeting the ones that are not performing as well and do that door knocking and get those guys out there um, to try and um, change that behaviour. You were only on your second win. There's another huge generalisation. People in terraced houses. No, no, no. The report. I don't the report. Mean, it's the report. Dave, I right didn't interrupt you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we haven't got any terraced houses in, in my world, and we've got that problem. So I'm glad, Tara, you're sending them out the whole of Merseyside. It isn't just terraced houses. It's Problem, you know, I think in all that, certainly mine, and we are not in terrorist house. Um, Sorry, 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 Sorry. Sorry. Um, there, I did a, quite a detailed piece of research in 2012, and actually, the, um, what we discovered was that uh, people who were living in 
sort of acorn one to three houses, so actually detached, semi detached, that kind of house, are yeah. uh, actually so confident about what they're recycling, they're recycling the wrong things confidently, and that's one of the problems that we've got to address. Um, so they think they're doing the right thing, and you can't tell them differently um, until you've got one of our guys at the door, um, you know, saying, you know, this is actually what you're meant to be recycling. So there is an issue. There's different issues in different areas. Everywhere has got their own particular issues that we can address to try and improve our actions. Thank you, Tom. And John? Yes, just take advantage of Tom and which I don't know the answer to this. Um, I have a students who moved house within my ward, same ward. Uh, one day they ran to their new house, there were no bin there. So they ran up and said, can you come have a bin? They said, yes, they can have a bin. It's stuck in town or whatever it is anyway. They said, well, no, but, you know, we've got to have a bin. How did it? I suppose they said, no, you have to pay for it. I mean, should they have loaded their bin from the previous house onto the removal van, taking it with them? Yeah. What's the policy on that? Technically, the, ha the bin should stay with the house because the council funded every house to have a recycling bin and a residual bin. Um, when, when someone buys a replacement bin because it's damaged or it gets goes missing, they're replacing the original bin that the council actually provided. So technically, it should stay with the house. What should happen um, in it, um, is that when someone moves either to, to buy a new house or go into a rented accommodation, they should make sure it's part of the fixtures and fittings list of that of that property. And if it's not, they should make sure that the person who is selling the house or moving out of the house, and the landlord, provides that, that bin. So well, what would you fix on uh, fit the bin to? Well, let's say fixtures and fittings list. There's a, there's a list in there that you, you sign off with, you know, do you want the, you know, the, the curtains and this, that, and the other. And they should make sure it's part of that. That's their opportunity. But sadly, it gets, it's not something that is on everyone's priority list when they're moving house and it does get overlooked <coughs> a lot. But that's, I think that's the best well, way. I'd rather that is it's the answer to your question. It should take. Right, right, right. However, if, 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 if the bin was to move house with them, I don't suppose anybody would notice. But Except for those Thank you. 